Before we get into the video, I'd like to let y'all know that I'm doing a giveaway for an LTI Argo Atlas. In order to participate, all you have to do is be subscribed and leave a comment in any video between now and the end of December. Let's get into this video. Well, it's not time for lunch just yet. So, who would like to talk about player organization? That's all right. It sounds like we've got a few few people in orgs in the house today. <laughs> uh, but Benoit, you talked about this a while ago, right? It's been 84 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I was originally asked to outline the original ideas between, be, uh, behind how organizations would work in the very early days of the project. A younger Ben, big ideas, same ideas, now action. You have no idea how happy I am that we're finally tackling this task and this design in the game to truly give you all the tools you need to make your empire in SC. There are more than 70,000 organizations registered on the RSI website. 69,999 of them of decent size and then test. <laughs> Ridiculous. Too big. But all of those have custom identities, logos, charter. The amount of creative and high quality content you guys have always produced has always amazed us and inspired us. Those orgs range from a small group of friends with just the name to large companies spanning a large amount of players with the intent to share wealth, missions, and campaigns together. Now we want to make those orgs matter in the game. Should you choose to join or create an organization, we want this social aspect to be part of your progression. But don't let me spoil it. Let's get a real designer to cover this stuff. JJ, you are a self-proclaimed big MMO player yourself, so why don't you give us the details? <clears throat> I didn't realize I went around self-proclaiming so much, but thank you. <laughs> um, so, but as an MMO player, I understand the different terminologies used in a lot of different games. So I just wanted to very quickly go over how we're using it in Star Citizen. So orgs, as many of you know, the players coming together to achieve a goal, whatever you want your goals to be. We give you the framework, and you set it up and drive it forward. And we were going to shout a few of them out, but I was actually told we couldn't play favorites, so we actually made our own. So we've got the Fellowship of JJ and... And the Baltzfold Buccaneers. Those what? guys. You guys made your own orgs? <laughs> yeah, we kind of left you out. Sorry about that, Jane. <laughs> Um, we also have NPC factions, and they're already in the game. And you can earn or lose reputation with them. Now contracts and doing nice things will earn you rep. And killing and stealing and all of that horrible stuff you love, Ben, that will lose you rep. Ling and Redwind and the ones that you can see on there are just a few examples, and there's going to be a lot more to come going forward. Now there are also guilds, like the Interstellar Transport Guild. And these are essentially collections of several factions, and we're putting them in a position to be more prevalent. What? You're saying there's something bigger than factions? Oh, yeah. So they're going to be something you interact with a lot, and they essentially handle contracts for the factions. But you will earn rep with both still, but as the bigger entity, the guild will be much more important. And you'll find out a lot more about guilds tomorrow at the Stars My Destination presentation at the end of tomorrow. Again, a tease. But now, we can dive into some of our new org systems. Yes. Let's start with the basics. I want to find or I want to recruit for an org. Yeah. So welcome to the new app for everything orgs. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> with the mask. <laughs> so orgs can be big and complex. And as we said, some of them have thousands of members. So when we designed the app, well, we made sure that we took this into account, but it's also something that we can expand on moving forward. So let's have a look at it. Now, I'd like to point out that the fellowship of JJ, like every designer-based org, is really focused on things like progression gameplay and mission and crafting and leveling up. But my Bolts Fault Buccaneers, no, they're the real deal. Now, we don't do any of that stuff. Now, we're in it for profit, interdiction lines, shipboarding action. We get all that sweet cargo for free. For free? That sounds pretty illegal, Ben. I don't know what you're talking about. What's, it? What's in those crates? Slam! <laughs> anyway, 
It sounds like you guys might be interested in joining some big orgs. Well, I prefer something smaller. So I think it's fair to say that we like playing in different ways and we'll want to join different orgs. The recruitment tab is the place to find them. So we're giving you the tools to promote your org to potential members in order to give a best first impression to them. I've just noticed that, Ben. You might want to have a word with Rich. It looks like. What? Like he doesn't want you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'll have a speak with him. <laughs> anyway, yes. So we're adding filters for when you're basically trying to find a home. Uh, and we want to cater to all types of players because we're a massive game, right? And orgs are combining tons of different gameplay in tons of different ways. So you can search by name if there's an infamous org you've encountered there, out there in the verse or online. Uh, you can search by size. So if you're after a big and active org like me, uh, or a small and more close-knit org like Gabriel. Then you can also search by the gameplay focuses you enjoy. So maybe you love trading in PvP, or maybe you like events like the Daymar Rally. Safe? Yeah. So I guess you'd end up searching for, say, social and racing, maybe? What if I love committing crime and role-play, asking for a friend? What's that got to do with the presentation? <laughs> Anyway, you can search for whatever you like, and if it's not there, why not just create it yourself? So, we allowed you to join multiple orgs back in 2014. I can still do that, right? Oh yeah, so we're keeping it supported, and we're actually doing the Star Citizen thing, and we're going one bigger. One bigger. So we're giving you an additional one to join when we actually bring it into the game too. And we wanted to keep it because we've all played games where it's far too limited. Like, one org per character just isn't enough for a game this size. Yeah, and here you get an idea of what the full screen will look like. It's going to be your one-stop shop for joining or finding players for your org. So let's have a look at the core functions and features to look forward to in the rest of the app. This is the summary tab. On here, you can select one of your orgs that you're in on the left-hand side, and you'll see, well, a summary, a lot of at-a-glance information. So we'll introduce some of these one at a time. So first off, Announcements and org information. Simple stuff. You use them how you want to. <laughs> also, we're adding an events log. So in here, you'll get a summary of important events within the org and changes to org statuses or settings. In short, these things, well, it's a big verse, and it's easy to miss cool things that happen in your org. And these features will help you stay on top of the day-to-day -day life of being a work member. OK, we're also adding an events calendar. So by default, <laughs> so by default it's going to be populated with our in-game events. So you never miss a thing. But more importantly, you'll obviously be able to add your own as well. So you'll never miss another meetup to get together for group content. It's tough to get everyone on at the same time, right? So use this for your Convoy Tuesdays, Casual Fridays, holding hands in Horizon Saturdays, whatever you want. Getting crushed by the Buccaneers on Monday. That's Gabriel's favorite. It is my favorite. <laughs> Remember that it is our intent that all the features we're looking at, at here are available on Spectrum as well, allowing you to access this info even if you're not in the game. This applies to parties, comms, friends, and all other functions. So I can join multiple orgs, like the Buccaneers, the Corvette Club, or the Slam Truckers. But how will others see me in the verse if I have multiple choices? Surely I need to pick a banner. So that's covered by something new called representing. And it's actually quite similar to the existed, existing affiliation main status system on the website. So if you're in multiple orgs, you choose which one you want to represent. But you can only represent one at a time. Now, there are ongoing benefits for being in orgs, which we'll get to in a minute. but. You choosing, oh, and choosing who you represent asks which one you want to benefit from at any given time. But why? Well, we wanted to support players who like to play with different groups of friends. But we didn't want players who are just in one to be at a major disadvantage to those that are in the full six. Because really, joining multiple orgs should be your choice and not feel like it's a necessity. And there's no need for you to switch which org you're representing to see things like this Moby screen or org chat. But we want to put limitations on how often you can switch to avoid exploitation, well, exploiting the systems. 
and we don't want to punish anyone who's, well, playing by the rules. And a big part of representing is visualizing it in world. We want you to be able to fly your banner for your org. So we're adding another MMO staple to the game. Tags. <laughs> so. <laughs> so the org leader will be able to set a tag for the org, and this gets appended to the name while you're representing. So you can easily see who is in which org at a glance. So we'll have it in chats, in world, and if you're not interested in this stuff, well, you have the option to turn it off as well. How novel! <laughs> we'll be able to identify people around us. Wow. <laughs> JJ, I'm curious. You mentioned guilds before, and I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing they fit into this somehow. Yes, so you may have spotted a few references on the UI to alignment earlier, but what is it? So, it's your opportunity to form a relationship between org and in-game guild. Now, just as you in personal rep with the guilds, you can with your org now as well. So your org leaders pick which one you want to align with, and while representing, org members doing specific action, like contracts with them, will increase the org's alignment with the guild. But which guild should you pick? So all of our guilds are going to have a specific theme and associated gameplay. And you can basically pick the one that matches your theme or benefits your org the most. So a combat-focused org, like the Fellowship, might want to align with themselves with the mercenary guild. Or one that enjoys making cash through trading and hauling, they'd probably want to align with the interstellar transport guild. Yeah, so how do these benefits work? Well, as your alignment with a guild, it raises, uh, as it raises, you both unlock new benefits from that guild, as well as improve your previously unlocked benefits. So for example, if I align my org with the Academy of Science guild, we might get research speed improvements. As my org performs contracts for this guild, alignment races, and that speed benefit gets better. And needless to say, other guilds will have other types of benefits. Finally, on guild alignment, you are not locked in forever. You can switch at any time. However, that will put your alignment back at zero. So it's a big choice. So every member gets full benefits. Well, not necessarily. We're also introducing loyalty. So it's similar to the org's alignment with a guild, but this represents your relationship to the org you're in. Anything you do that benefits the org while you are representing it will gain you loyalty with them. So for example, you could be doing missions for the org-aligned guild, or you could be depositing money and materials into org storage. Org storage? <sighs> Another tease. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, we wanted to encourage long-term membership because we don't think you should just be able to join a well-established org and then just get everything instantly for no effort. So to put it simply, having low loyalty limits what you gain from the org's alignment benefits, and having high loyalty gives you full access. We also wanted org leadership to be able to view members' current loyalty and use it as a tool to reward appropriately with things like ranks and permissions. And then loyalty resets to zero when you leave an org, so there's some incentive for sticking around. Wait, does that mean I lose my loyalty if I change my representation away? No, so not representing puts your contributions or ongoing benefits on hold. So when you start representing again, you essentially just pick up where you left off. But uh, what if I leave the org? It's not very loyal, so it resets. <laughs> right. Well, so, you know, the, not in my org, my buccaneers, they're mostly scoundrels, and so they tend to join and leave, and, you know, it's not very loyal in general. Uh, larger orgs, the, they tend to be a pain to manage them. With the flow of joiners and leavers, do we have any tools to help managers like me? Well, let's have a look at the Members tab. So this is less complex than the previous tabs, but it's equally important. This is where you see the community of your org and your place in it. So in here, you will be able to manage members. You can leave notes and see the ranks of members. And as we did with the friends list and the party list, we're adding rich presence in here as well. This is the rank panel. 
it gives you a clear indication where you sit within the community. And you'll see permissions on here, but that's something that we'll delve more into at a later date. For now, I'll just say that the leader might be able to determine permissions for each rank, and uh, well, it could be things like inviting new members or accessing org storage. Stop teasing us with org storage, God! Come on. <laughs> so, all right, so orgs form and friendship and animosities build up. Maybe my buccaneers and the fellowship of JJ don't really see eye to eye most of the time. Would be great for this to translate in game, wouldn't it? Hmm, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah, it's a good job we got it covered, which is with our new alliances and rivalry system. So you're gonna have the ability to create alliances and go to war. And there are many reasons to make friends. You might want to have trading partners, or you might want to group up for protection if you're playing somewhere like Pyro. And at the same time, there are probably going to be many reasons why you won't get along. Maybe an org keeps attacking or stealing from you. Alliances forming are an agreement between two org leaders, and it has to be mutual. You can't force someone to be friends. Unlike real life. Request a sent from the screen if you have permission, and you can respond here as well. And as a bonus, ally dogs are going to have additional lines of communication, like alliance chat, or being able to share alliance events on the calendar, just to name a few. So, rivalry, that isn't a mutual agreement. If someone decides you're their rival, well, tough luck. Uh, however, you could reach a mutual agreement to make a truce, putting you back at neutral. And there's no real benefit to having rivals, so we want to make them easy to identify. Uh, that's why alliances and uh, rivalries tie directly into hostility indicators. So just like now, <laughs> you'll be able to see neutral contacts in white and party members show up in blue, Whereas your org wingmen will come in a dark green and your allied orgs in a paler green. Your rivals will show up in red. Or people in your kill list. The kill list. People on your kill list that we mentioned before will also show up in red or orange. If you're not, well, they're not legal to attack. That's the go straight to jail card if you, if you kill them here. Uh, so we'll be adding accessibility options for this stuff as well, to make sure that everybody can benefit from these updates. So, that's everything for Orgs today, but it's just the tip of the social iceberg. Uh, and we didn't have time to show you everything, but there's lots more to show in the future. And we're super excited because we finally get to deliver it. Yeah. Now, what have we learned? We're upgrading Salt Star Citizen social tools to MMO size. With a new social app in the MobiGlass, proper tools to manage parties with rich presence, ready check, and ship information. Richer chat with the niceties normally present in every game. A new party finder, a system that allows you to find players to play with. Revent beacons and guide system powered by rating and proficiency. On orgs, we're bringing orgs in the game. We're obviously with a new orgs app, but also alignment. So you align your org with a guild and get benefits for your members, representations, which identifies you in the verse and gives you benefits and loyalty to your orgs, and alliances and rivalry to identify friend from foe. And now, we're gonna leave you with a short video to end on because we couldn't show everything we're working on, but what would it look like in the unlikely event where our two powerhouse orgs came together as one. And my org, right? Yeah. It's a little teaser for tomorrow's crafting your home presentation and what you can build together as an org and teasing something else coming in the future. Have a great CitizenCon, guys. See you there. See ya.